Hello, welcome back to another video. Today we'll try to go with the Ariadne. Okay, I still can go. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll hear about it again <laughs> because I found it. I find it the easiest way since we need gold. What is one? If I remember correctly. This part is a bit annoying. I'll leave you here and we will meet at Ariadne's encounter. So be right back. And so here we are. We will need to get mechanical oddity, I think. I will persuade her. Alright, this is me. No, don't help me, please. It's something. No, I'm kidding. Anyway. Uh, for some reason, I thought we need a ball here. <laughs> yes, yes, a bit. Yes, yes, please. A bit less. 40. I can pay 40. Okay, so let's retry that. <laughs> we need 40 gold, so. Anything to start, we need something we can sell. <laughs> yeah, this. That, that one was fast. Wait, I can go. I can go. No, I don't know. I don't know how to work for it. I have no idea how much those things cost. This is not a lot. Because we lose lots of damage. So, again, be back. Okay, so here we are, back again. We we'll try to persuade her again. Oh. <laughs> mm, this is gonna be hard Even for 100, please. Okay, get out. God damn it. Okay, be right back. Okay, so once again, let's try that. Please. Uh, what do we do? I aren't ready. Let's try persuading her. No, don't help me. It's helpless anyway. <laughs> okay, no cow, don't take it. It's okay. Ah, oh, I should have got <laughs> He's just let me take it. Hmm. Fine. Please everyone success. This market. Okay, not okay. Yes! Yes! Take it! My own great reluctance signs over the mechanical oddity. What do you plan to do with it? Um, fix it forge. Oh, I haven't seen a forge like that since burned down the vacuum pass away. Ariadne Grimaces grabs the mechanical oddity and leaves without saying I'm not. God damn it, I think they are. Nicely done. Now, the next thing that we need for the fort is I must patch the bread as you just remember. A pumpkin! But not just a pumpkin. Okay, what about the pumpkin? Let's see. So I guess we need food. Maybe more gold. Let's see. Steagle pumpkin. Okay, but I will wait for them to end before we do anything else. So, see ya. Okay, it seems they are done with killing everything in the city. So, we'll try to get the pumpkin. Hopefully, all we need is gold. Yeah. 
I fell down again. <sighs> what do we do? Get what we need. One day. One day we'll get it. I hope. Okay, but I'll again I'll see you when we are at the right encounter, so be right back. There's not much to see here, Ariadna looks around the town center. It's nothing like the city. We do have a fortune toy though, which is great. Uh, so we've acquired a mechanical oddity for poor Anders Forge. Now we'll need a special pumpkin. Thankfully my mother grows the famed Stiegel pumpkins herself. Stiegel's town center in is unremarkable apart from a beautiful clock tower and a small cluster of tents tucked into a shaded corner away from the hustle and bustle. Okay, let's see what the pumpkin will be used for. To fix the forge, of course. Okay. Mm, let's visit another. Ariadna's mother lives in a farmhouse on the fringe of Stiegel. She is much, much shorter than Ariadne, decidedly average. Her mousy brown hair is cropped short and her thin face seems fallen in a mask of anxiety. Ariadna's mother, Bethel, clutters around the kitchen with a paint look on her face. What will your father? A calm, a calm comes from over Greta's face. She talks about her husband. My husband for the armor for the emperor himself. I'm a hero now, ma. Ariadne pipes up like a child who feels that they should second to her arrival. People are going to know who I am. I'm going to die a hero's death. Don't say that, Ari. You're not going to die. Everybody dies, ma. At least I'll die a hero's death. I'm like father. Ooh, and the pumpkin. Her face lights up. Oh, are you planning to to follow you in your other father's footsteps? Oh, Ari, that's wonderful. No, I'm not. Ari, my friends, I'm rebuilding a fort for a friend. Her mother sighs and leaves the room, returning the pumpkin as well as whatever. That's the last of the harvest. This is hardly the most noble. That of your was fast. Friends. You seem a common errand runner. Okay, let's approach that thing. A cloaked family are futilely huddled around a small fire pit as a board that somebody will try and stop them. Okay. The mother and father automatically step defensively in front of the soup, pulling the children behind them. Okay, I'll give you some food. The Jordan sons are proudly, although they fear thin face betrayal them. We may have lost our homes, but we are not beggars. Okay, and uh, who are you? The mother can choose her world. We are from far water, but I doubt that means anything to you. I just saved fire far water, okay? Ariadne chimes in. Far water, where the great Kailua River meets the sea. The father looks surprised and then terribly sad. Yes, here, the most beautiful town in the snow, and we don't know when we can ever return back. The Empire has taken our homes and set up their world war towards the bush into the north. When will they stop? Are you so protective? The father laughs wearily. Because we are starving and we don't know where our next meal will come from or even where the sticker will make us move on. Okay, I'll leave you. I tried, okay? And let's see when that's gonna be. <laughs> so, I will see you where. Come on, show me. Do you know? So I'll see you at the tarot vein ore. So, you're right back. Terror vein ore isn't as ominous as it sounds, Ariadne explains as you approach the great gaping maw of the salt cliff mines. I believe a bandit called Trant is in charge here. Dusty miners travel the winding paths into the air, pushing heavy cars stacked high with greenery blue ore. You follow a group of weary, weary workers deep into the mine, rich veins of ore glitter in the dim lamp, lamp lit. Lamp light. Clouds of dull blue ore dust hang in the air, stinging your eyes. When you squint, you can make out a man in the distance, haranguing a group of tired looking workers. That be round, Aretna notes. Okay, let's approach him. He glares at you early, occasionally shouting at Mary's hurry up. Okay, let her do the talking. We look to Ariadne and she smiles, understandingly. She raises her hammer in a slow arc over her head and brings it crashing down, right when the, where the man is standing. At the last minute, he nimbly leaps out of the way. Okay, let's join. 
When the fighter yells and the tunnels fill with well armed lackeys. Why did I let you talk? Wait. Oh, I took a nice level thing. Why would I ever let you talk? All you do is swing your hammer. Your anvil. Oh, it works like that. Okay. Okay, that's cheating. The miners look horrified as you slay the last attacker. What have you done? The thieves' guilds will take vengeance on us for this! Panic spreads throughout the mine, your protests and attempts to explain only anger them further. Ariadne looks confused, still crouching her armor. Come on, I think we have to go. We didn't do the heroic thing. Oh god damn it, Ariadne! Okay. Yep. Be right back. Okay, let's do it properly this time. I'm doing it, okay. Enter, uh, who are you? He leans against a dusty wall and lazily flicks his rapier at a passing miner, causing them to flinch. I'm Ron the fighter, and I'm in charge when the boss ain't here, and the boss ain't here, so I'm in charge. You start to cough, the blue dust is impossible to escape. Did that, isn't that dangerous? Yeah, it's poison, alright? Ron smirks at your clear discomfort. We get the miners to drink brewed silver leaf every morning, but sorry, I'm fresh out. Okay. Her own thing. Price is 300 gold for a piece. You got 300 gold? No? Maybe we should see if any of the miners can help us. It'd be easier to talk to one away from Rand. Okay, let's go outside. Talk to a miner. The man looks around nervously when you stop to talk to her. Um. Yeah, let's straight to the uh, talk. Tomorrow loves, we do not own anything here but the crossstone pack. I happen to know, though, something that could help from his friend to park with some, but you have to do something for me first. The miner looks around a few furtively. One of the birds here threw my daughter's stole into the pit. If you can get it back to me, I'll tell you Rand's terrible secret. Okay. Let's... Ah, enter the mine. And you reach the pit. The pit is aptly named. Miners point you through the tunnels to a pond sized circle trench in a cave. There are a few miners here, but a couple of friends like it are uh, unborn about. Let's try getting past them. I think we'll be fine. Okay, this one should be okay. You manage to sneak past. Your cough is hacked and wet. You the tickle in your throat is becoming painful. You peer into the depths of the pit. It looks like you can climb down. Beside you, a dusty wooden cart dangles from a long disused pulley. Okay, let's try it. Oh god, it's wrong. <gasps> the flimsy ropes creak as you slowly, slowly lower yourself to the bottom. With each breath, more and more dust fills your lung. Okay. Find the door. At the bottom of the pit, you find yourself knee deep in dusty bones and rubble, but with uh, the occasional hat or rusted pickaxe. 
Okay, that's... Yes. Asad's quick underfoot alerts you to the presence of a tiny lion and doll. Its yarn hair caked with dust. Despite its reduced circumstances, the smell remains stitched into its face. Ariadna continues to happily rummage through her macabre debris. She pulls something shiny out of a pile of old boots. No, thank you. I'd rather go out. We couldn't carefully back out of the pit. Outside. You stumble out of the mine and take big gulps of fresh air. It feels cool on the burning lungs. Talk to Miner. Give her the doll. Oh, yes, that's my daughter's. I can't believe you managed to find it. Didn't the cloth rose give you trouble? No. Anyway, now for my part of the deal. Are you listening closely? Rand has a hidden cache of silver spoons. Nobody knows why, but if you were to threaten his collection, I'm sure he would comply to your request. Okay. Front round. Threaten his spoon collection. Not my silver spoons! When tears up as you fret. Who told you? Keep your voice down. I'll give you your them or. You approach the final steps Thank of you. this quest. She glares at you early, occasionally shouting on my to hurry up. Okay, okay, we're out. Outside. And let's sleep. Ariadna pats the old from us at hand. That's the last thing we need. Let's go back to the city. Anders is going to be so happy. <laughs> I hope he will. Because it took me a lot of time to get all of this. It took you 16 minutes to get here. It took me more than that. A lot more. And we'll meet at the blacksmith at the city with Anders. So be right back. There, Ariadna steps back to admire her war. The forge is just as you remembered it. If not more detailed, its wooden frame carved of intricate motifs, the attached anvils and tools hang in a way as to keep it from tipping. Talk a bit more. Get out of here with that! Ariadna gaffs and blushes. You hold the final components, the strange metal warble from Marion the Mage. A hunk of night blue turtle vein ore and a steel pumpkin. Pass me Marion's trinket. Ariadna reaches a hand out and plucks a thin sharp instrument from her belt. Something steps heavily onto the path behind you. Like a nightmare, you turn to see the hulking great form of Trachnar the, the Mighty. The familiar, horrible face of the ogre leers down at you, his one good eye white with mania. I don't know graceful welcome for our old friend. By the god, he's back from the grave. The Ariadna shouts as she flings suit from the fort into the resurrected ogre's eyes. Trachna roars and rubs the black dust away with his massive fists. Ariadna glances at you and then at the fort. We've got to split up. We can't let him destroy Anders' present. Meet me in the slums. And I'll have to fight him. Probably. Ariadna's muscles strain as she drags the rattling forward behind her, disappearing down an alleyway. You hurry down a different path before Jackner can get his bearings. An old and familiar face appears once more, and there is more to this quest than initially appeared. You journey through the city to meet with Ariadna. Oh, goddammit. You ask around, but the inhabitants merely sneer or ignore you completely. You turn down on one of the lonely streets and run straight into the belly of Trachna the Mighty. Without wasting a breath, he lives in a bloody club near. As though pray, really to flee? The ogre brings his club down. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Oh. Oh. A bird alights on the ogre's shoulder and Mr. Kuiwa is distracted. There's no sign of Ariadna in the slums, a small grey dog butters with disinterest from the dead to Leave 
Please tell me we can't lose her permanently. We just keep going Okay, we got this. Uh, I don't get it. Yes. You re reunite with Ariadna behind an old way in the slums without wasting in time, she gets to work. You quickly pass her the bauble. She fiddles with it some mo moment momentarily, then slots it into the side of the port. She gives it a final tap and steps back. Now that's starting to look like something. Screams of terror herald the arrival of Drachnar the Mighty. Oh, we fight! Please don't tell me it's time. Please. Just don't, don't do this. Hi, Dragon! He has not done with you, little mouse. Not by far. Keep hitting him! <laughs> she hit him so hard he lost his friends from earlier. Ariadna wipes the sweat from her brow. Well fight now, do you want the ore? If we begin to rummage in your hive or sack the blue ore, there comes a fearful cry from a rock child peering at Dragon's body. He's still alive! The huge oak groans and his body convulses. Ariadna looks to her hammer and then to Drachnor's unconscious form, his head weak and exposed, then shakes her head. As she heaves the fort back into motion, she whispers, Let's split up and meet at the docks. You should have killed him. Just saying. You draw you through the city to meet with Ariadne again. Okay. You follow the sound of screaming to the market by the dogs. Drachner is there, bleeding from the wounds you've inflicted, but still smashing through the stalls like they were made of weeds. You wonder where the Empire soldiers are in this accursed city. The ogre spots you across the way and his monstrously lumpy face splits into a grin. He hastily knocks a pistol out of his path as he begins his approach. There's a yell from the other side of the market. You want the forge, do you? Well, come get it, beastie! Ariadne raises her armor over her head. How many times do we need to kill? Well, I guess three. Bobo, or <laughs> Pumpkin. It's so hot, I'm so sweaty. Oh. Wait, he has half it feet? Well, he's hurt badly. And he lost the person again. <laughs> Ariadne places the terror vein ore into the base of the forge. It lights instantly, the sparkling flames reflecting in her cheerful blue eyes. It will burn forever now, unless it gets smashed by an ogre again. Again, the ogre's body convulses. A few soldiers are wandering the market strewn by the hubbub. Hopefully they will deal with him. Ariadne heaves the traveling forge into momentum once again. We should split up just in case. This old girl is almost on her last legs. Meet me at the tavern, the nag's head, where our boy Anders is. Okay, can I make it? 
Well, just maybe that's not. Okay. You find your way to the nag's head. Once again, Andra flies corn in his bottle of ale. You hear the traveling four trampling on the cobbled path, and Drakner's heavy foot falls not too far behind. Drakner drags his blood behind him, dying, but still not dead. A curse, please! Cowardly knaves! Cheats! Blood sprays from his mouth as he rolls. Hail thy forge or perish! No. Hopefully, Ariadne will kill him this time. We'll finish him all. Maybe I will do it. Come on! We are practically dead. Finally, Draknor the Mighty lays dead. Pushing through the crowd is Anders, the side of his head still wet with ale, his eyes wide with disbelief, taking in the forge, spinning, chugging and alive. Three figures have been carved into its side, Anders, Ariadne and you. The tiny cavern and the chaos are laughing, forever fixed in the state of happiness. The blacksmith's daughter beams from ear to ear. It's us! The three heroes! <laughs> Anders bursts into messy tears. Thank you. Thank you. He bows deeply to you, then Ariadne. You are truly your father's doctor. Your companion frowns just for a second before laughing and drawing you and Anders into a warm, painful hug. The Nags Head Tavern's patrons tranquilly marvel at the traveling fort. A noble is already in an animated conversation with Anders, holding a lucrative number of halves. What about your father? My father was a coward. Ariadne knows matter of factly. He was loaded by the, as the best blacksmith in the land by the Empire, but they've yet to meet me. What will become of Anders? Ariadne folds her massive arms and smiles. I think he will be fa just fine from now on. Okay, so let's continue our journey. Thanks. Now that's just. <laughs> and here is your reward, at least in potential. Ariadna stands even taller than before, her cheeks blushing with pride. We really are heroes, aren't we? A reward well earned. Thank you, and now we will see what the reward is. Finally. Stable pumpkin, black seed, and the hero. This concludes Ariadne's story. Now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.